Hey, my name is Mason, and today I want to show you everything I know about the Bink Looper. Before we get started, you'll need to be vaguely familiar with Ableton to get anything out of this video. If you're just starting out in Ableton, save this video for later and get a little bit more comfortable in the software. I promise it's worth the wait. Okay, so the Bink Looper is a Max MSP device created by looping wizard Bink Beats and a couple of his friends. Bink Beats uses this device to control clip recording by automating dummy clips or presetting clips that don't have any MIDI or audio information, just controls for the Bink Looper device. Feel free to download the device if you haven't already. I'll link to it in the description of the video. There's a device to use for MIDI tracks and another device to use in audio tracks but the interface essentially looks the same, and the automation process works the same way in both kinds of tracks. I'm gonna start off explaining this process in a MIDI track since I mostly use MIDI instruments and data. Let's go ahead and drag and drop the Bink Looper MIDI device into a MIDI track. You'll see the interface in the effects chain below. I almost never interact with this display when I make music and perform because I set everything up through automation and clips. So don't worry too much about this interface. But in this display, you can set the scene you want recorded clips to land in. You have three options for record arming, a launch button, buttons to stop a recorded clip or delete a previous clip, quantization options, and places to set the loop length and delay functions. I'll explain all of that in a bit. We need to do a little bit of routing before we get started. It's super important to know that this track containing the Bink Looper device will only contain the Bink Looper device. That's because this track will only contain the MIDI data that will be fed into your MIDI instrument. Things like pitch, rhythm, pedal sustain, expression, modulation. But the actual MIDI instrument and any audio effects, MIDI effects, or signal processing will happen in another track. So each MIDI instrument in your arrangement will be made up of two MIDI tracks. A track with the Bink Looper, which records MIDI data, and another track that receives that data and runs it through MIDI instruments and signal processing. It's possible to put the Bink Looper and instrument sounds and effects all on the same track, but to put it simply, you'll basically be confined to one specific setting for any instruments or signal processing in the same track as the Bink Looper. Seems a little complicated, but I'll show you why I use two tracks in a little bit. So we need to send the MIDI from the first track to the second track and receive the MIDI data in the second track from the first track. Then turn the monitor on and select a MIDI input device if you want to use one specific device for this instrument. And finally, add any MIDI instrument to your second track. I'll choose a marimba I like. Now let's dig into the process of automation inside clips. Bink Beats calls these seemingly empty clips dummy clips, and I'm sure a lot of other people do too. But they're not empty, they just contain automation related to the effects and devices we're using to control the sound and performance of the instrument. Double click in the grid in the first track to make a new clip. We're going to use this clip to record a new loop, and I like to make my recording clips red, like the record arm button. In the envelopes tab of clip view, you can see that we can choose to set automation for the MIDI control, the Bink Looper, and the mixer. We'll just be working on the Bink Looper. In the drop-down bar on the right, you can see a bunch of functions that we can control by assigning values at specific mu places in musical time. Let's make sure the device is on first. Next, we'll assign the arm function to on so that whenever this clip is launched, the record arm is turned on. Then we'll set the launch function to value 2, which launches the recording of a new clip. Since my global quantization is set to one bar, when the red clip is started in the middle of a bar, it'll begin recording at the beginning of the next bar. After that, we can specify a location for these recorded clips to be stored. I like keeping recorded clips at the top, and Bink Beats does too, so I assign this function to the first value. Let's also specify a loop length so that the clip will stop recording at a specified time. Once you have all this set up, you'll be able to record a clip to loop without having to press any buttons to stop recording. Let's see what we have so far. Now 
There are a few other programmable functions that can be really useful. I like to assign the delete function to on so that whenever I start the red clip, the clip I previously recorded is automatically deleted. If you leave this function off, the recording clip won't record over whatever clip is already in the program position for recorded clips to land. With record stop, you can record a clip without the clip immediately looping and playing back after it's recorded. This could be helpful if you have extra time in your performance to record a clip that you want to use later on without starting it immediately. With the delay function, you can delay the recording of a clip by a prescribed number of beats. If you assign the value 4 to this function, the looper will start recording your MIDI input 4 beats after the record clip is launched. Keep in mind though that this delay function doesn't account for your global quantization, so you might have to experiment to make sure the clip starts recording when you want it to. For example, with global quantization set to 1 bar, setting the delay to 4 is the same as setting it to 0, because when it's set to 0, the red clip starts recording at the beginning of the bar and launches recording at the beginning of the next bar, four beats away from the start of the red clip. Issues like that lead me to program recording delays a different way. The one drawback of automating functions inside the dummy clips, as far as I can tell, is that you can't assign quantization values because you have to quantize recorded clips after you record them unless you have global record quantization turned on. One solution I've seen on YouTube is to MIDI map one button on your MIDI controller to the quantize button on the interface of Bing Looper. So that once you record your looping clip, you can press one button instead of using your mouse and keyboard. But in the Bing Looper interface, you can pre-assign quantization subdivisions so that each track with a looper can be preset to different subdivisions. If you want to stop your loop for whatever reason, but you don't want to delete the loop, you can just create an empty dummy clip, a truly empty clip, with no automation for any envelope. You could just leave that space in the grid as a stop button too if you want. Once your loop is stopped, to start the loop again, simply create a dummy clip and set the launch parameter to value 2. You can program all of these functions the same way in audio tracks too, if you want to record audio from a microphone, a hardware synth, or anything else that isn't MIDI. Create an empty clip by recording a measure of silence. Then you can use the Envelopes tab of Clip View to assign values to certain functions of the looper. I like to use two tracks for each audio instrument for the same big reason I like to use two MIDI tracks, so make sure you have that routing set up. Well, why do I use two tracks for each MIDI and audio layer of my project? Because controlling the Bink Looper is just one way to use dummy clips. You can use dummy clips to control parameters of any instrument or effect in your effects chains. And the possibilities with that amount of power are seemingly limitless. With the same clip constantly looping in the Bink Looper track, you can switch instrument sounds by selecting chains in an instrument rack you can add and modify filters, EQ, compression, delay, reverb, or any other effects you'd normally have on a track. You can automate volume and panning to program layers of your arrangement in a preset mix. You can automate levels of your sends, and you can turn layers on and off completely. If everything was all on one track, starting a new dummy clip to control effects parameters would stop the playback of the loop. Putting the sounds and processing of your instrument in a different track than the Bink Looper gives you unlimited power to modify the sound of the instrument over time. If you want to check out how I use Bink Looper and control my arrangement through dummy clips, I'll be making videos documenting my process for most of the looping songs I release over time. I hope that by explaining my process and walking through how I set everything up, you can steal some of my ideas and use them in your own musical projects. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe for more videos about Ableton Live and the music that I'm making all the time.